Hello and welcome to the next installment of our free CAD tutorial series. In the previous installment, we looked over creating a simple part using constructive solid geometry in the part workbench. And in this installment, we will be looking at making that same part with some extra additions in the part design workbench. So without further ado, let's get started. Go ahead and create a new document and make sure you are in the part design workbench up here. And unlike the part workbench, the part design workbench is based on sketches instead of putting together existing shapes. So what we do is we make these 2D sketches and then we extrude or subtract them from existing stuff. So let's go ahead and switch to this view here with our zero key to get it on the corner and hit create a new sketch and it'll give us these planes we can select from. You can see that right here. Let's go ahead and do the XZ plane. Hit OK. And we'll be presented with this grid like view where we can make our sketch. So we know that we want it to be kind of a rectangle with an arc over the top like the previous one. So let's start with a rectangle. We can go ahead and draw it out like that and let's take a look at what we're actually looking at here we have the rectangle but it isn't really a rectangle it's actually four distinct line segments and they have constraints applied to them in the corners here we have these coincident constraints so if we select one you can see it gets highlighted green over here those coincident constraints, which you could make up here, basically say that these two points should be in the same spot. So these are actually four separate line segments with these constraints to join them together. And then you also have these horizontal and vertical constraints, which basically, as the name would imply, makes the line either horizontal or vertical. So we can still move this around and all that. Um, but yeah, anyway, what we want to do next is make our arc over the top. So we have this arc tool here. Let's start from approximately in the center here. Drag it out like that, move it over the top. There we go. Now we see it's not connected and we still have this line. So let's go ahead and select this line, hit delete to delete it and it'll also clear out those constraints that were attached to that line and we're left with this. So let's go ahead and join these together. Let's select these two points and then we can click on the create a coincident constraint or press the C key. And let's do the same over here. And then we have our join together part. Now this looks kind of good, but we don't have the exact dimensions and we can still move it around and all that. So let's take care of that. For this bottom portion, we know we want it to be 10 wide. So let's go 10. And then for this side, we know we want it to be 15. So let's set that. And then we know that we want these two sides to be equal to each other so we can select them both and click our equality constraint here and now it wigs out when we drag this but all this stuff can't change. Now we're not quite done uh, you can see where it says under constrained sketch with three degrees of freedom. We could technically use this right now However, you really want to fully constrain your sketches so that nothing on them can move if that's possible, or sometimes you might want to have some degrees of freedom. But that is a subject for uh, more advanced topics. So anyway, let's first lock this to the origin point. So that removes two of our degrees of freedom. So now we just have one, which is this. And there's two ways we could constrain this. We could either constrain the angle or the radius. For this, I'm just going to say, let's constrain the radius to 5. 
there we go fully constrained sketched it's all solved and everything and then we can just hit close and now we have that sketch in our three-dimensional view so if we want to make it 3d what we can do is go over to our model here make sure our sketch is selected and hit pad and in our previous model we had it as six millimeters so let's go ahead and hit OK and now we got that now to punch the hole we just want to make a new sketch on this side of the model and punch it through so let's select this face hit create a new sketch and now we just want a circle that's the same as that circle that we had in the previous model so let's make our circle here close enough to where it would actually be and as you might guess we need to lock this in position both horizontally and vertically so another way you can do constraints is to actually select the constraint first and then select your two points that's not my preferred way of doing it but it's a way you can do it and you can also drag these measurements around if you uh, if you want to use these drawings for a reference, like if you were going to build something out of this by hand, it would be useful to have those uh, measurements easily visible. So let's go ahead and make our vertical constraint here. Let's set it to 15. And there we go. And then we obviously want our radius to be 4. There we go. Fully constrained sketch. We can close that out. And now we want to make sure our sketch is selected here and use the pocket tool. So we create pocket with selected sketch and it'll give us these parameters over here. We can see it doesn't go all the way through. We could either increase this distance until it does or we can use through all. Generally you should use through all if the point is to make it go all the way through. Because uh, if you don't, then if you ever rescale the part that's poking a hole in, it could extend past where you put it, unless you set it to a really high value. So go ahead and hit OK. And here we go. We've got our uh, an exact copy of that previous model. So let's go ahead and add... I don't know, just an indentation to the side here. So let's go ahead and click that. And uh, we'll cut like a rectangular hole straight through the middle. So go ahead and select that face, make a new sketch, draw out a rectangle approximately where we want it to be. And I want to space this 1.5 millimeters from the edge. So I'm going to do this, set our horizontal constraint. And set our vertical constraint and then I know that this is going to be this is already 10 by 15 or no 6 by 15 so it would be 6 minus 3 since we have the padding on both sides so this would be 3 and then this would be 15 minus 3 is 12 All right, there we go, fully constrained sketch. We got our thing there. We can go ahead and put our pocket through and let's make it eight deep since that's gonna bring it coincidentally right where we want it there. All right, and so now we got a part with uh, an extra little feature to it. And uh, one thing that is useful to know is that if you change something in your model, let's say we go to this pad and we set it to 8. You'll notice that it doesn't change, but if we hit F5, it will. And that's something that uh, I took me a minute to figure out whenever I first started using this program. So you have to hit F5 if you change some of these values in anything but like the most primary part here, or uh, most primary 
tool application, I guess, would be the best word for it. So just keep that in mind. So let's go ahead and there we go. And if you undo, you might have to refresh as well. So uh, one of the convenient things about the part design workbench is you aren't limited to part design completely. You can actually go back to your part workbench and use this part you made with that. So you can move it around. So if I wanted to move it around on the x-axis, I could do that. And you can also use your Boolean operators. So if we add a sphere or a cylinder in over here, let's set it to radius of four, make it more interesting. Then we can select our pocket here, our cylinder here, and do make a cut. So now we got an even more interesting shape. And you can start to see how this all these uh, operations can be compounded together to make interesting parts. So that pretty much concludes this part of the tutorial series. And in the next one, we'll be looking over some of these other tools and just some general tips and tricks you can use. Thank you for watching.